My name is Angela, and I am a face of PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. My journey with PCOS started when I was um, a teenager. About the time that I was 13, um, that's when I started menstruating. It's also when the symptoms of polycystic ovarian syndrome first started. Uh, I developed, um, well, right from the beginning I had very irregular periods, meaning that I was having them maybe every three or four months, and they were extremely painful, um, much more painful than I was um, seeing that my my friends were dealing with and um, it would basically put me in bed for two or three days um, every time I had one and I was glad I was only having them every three or four months because of it at that time I was also um, getting tremendous amounts of weight I had um, had problems with my weight prior to um, uh, developing um, PCOS but when I turned about 13 is when I started gaining a lot of weight and so by the time I was 13 14 years old I was about 75 pounds overweight and it was very unusual for someone in my family to be very overweight, overweight because we were extremely active and um, all the people in my family were you know thin and active and watched what they ate and I did the same thing only that wasn't working for me and um, we went to doctors and I was being raised at the time in um, South Dakota so at the time they really didn't have any answers for us um, and even when we moved to Texas shortly thereafter uh, the doctors that we would see um, really were just, you know kind of nonchalant about it and would put me on this diet that diet I was on diet since the time I was 13 um, and it was very frustrating for me because I would you know eat the way I was supposed to eat um, very healthy and I was continuing to gain weight so in my high school and college years, I developed bulimia and anorexia. Anorexia first, and then it kind of morphed into bulimia later on. Um, and that was my means of trying to control my weight because that was the only thing, thing that seemed to sort of work. Um, so I was able to keep my weight to about 25 to 35 pounds overweight through those means, but it really didn't help with a lot of the other symptoms that I started having. Um, not only the painful periods, but also hair development um, where I didn't really want it, um, like on my face and um, hands and different things in my arms. And I was also, you know, I was developing really big muscles and I really couldn't understand it. Whenever I would work out, um, I developed muscles like none of the other girls did and I was always just really frustrated and embarrassed by that fact. And so um, I stopped lifting weights because uh, it seemed like I was, you know, turning myself into, um, you know, a female bodybuilder, which was, wasn't what I needed or wanted. So um, when I was uh, in my 20s, I finally got control of the eating disorder issues, but then I started gaining the weight that much more because I was trying to eat right and all of that, but then I just kept gaining weight. Um, finally, in my late 20s, my mother called me when I was at work one day. I was working in an advertising agency in Dallas, and she said that she had just read an article in Women's Day magazine about this condition called polycystic ovarian syndrome. And she called me because she's like, this is you. Uh, she knew my frustrations that I'd been dealing with all my life. The fact that I had been misdiagnosed many times, in fact, one time in my early 20s when I went to the doctor, um, they basically said that, um, you know, I should just stop eating so much and then I'd get my periods back. Um, by the time I hit my 20s, my, my periods had completely stopped. And so between the ages of 20 and 29, I didn't have any periods. So by the time my mom read this article, things were pretty severe. And um, by that time, I'd also, gained so much weight, I was con probably considered about 100 pounds overweight at that point. And um, so I read the article that she faxed to me and basically said polycystic ovarian syndrome has all these symptoms and I had all the symptoms except for one. And so I made an appointment with a reproductive endocrinologist and basically went in two weeks later and when I sat down in the chair in front of him, it was kind of remarkable because um, I started my story, he asked me why I was there, and I told him all the things that I was dealing with, 
And he goes, without even doing lab work on you, I can tell you right now that you have polycystic ovarian syndrome. And of course he did do blood work, but I left his office that day happy that I had a name for the thing that I had been dealing with all my life, but also very um, sad because I had read the information that was out there at the time on polycystic ovarian syndrome and there's no cure and they're not easy answers regarding polycystic ovarian syndrome. So after I got diagnosed, I was put on um, various medications um, to help me out. I was put on metformin and some other medications. Um, metformin worked a little bit, um, but it, it really wasn't helping me much. Um, at the time that I was diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome, the reproductive endocrinologist also told me that I had a less than 5% chance of ever conceiving a child um, based on my blood work. Um, my testosterone level was five times the highest level of a normal female, which kind of explained the whole bodybuilder or weightlifting issue. So, um, you know, the doctor wasn't optimistic about me being able to have children when I start, decided to start a family. And that also just caused a lot of um, psychological issues. And that little sound explains the rest of my story. Um, I continued to try to look for answers. And um, the biggest two things that I was dealing with was the obesity and the fact that I um, was having issues f with fertility. And I did get married in 2005, and I, we tried to start a family right away, and it wasn't happening. And so uh, four years ago, um, I finally went to my doctor and said, okay, what am I gonna do? And um, they were not optimistic, but um, they put me on Clomid. And the first time that I took Clomid, I conceived my son. And so against a lot of the odds out there, I did um, conceive my son. I was at the age of 39 at the time. And so um, there are a lot of reasons why it probably couldn't have worked, might not have worked, but it did. And then shortly after I gave birth to my son, the other issue that was heavy on my heart was the fact that I, at that point in time, was about 145 pounds overweight. And um, pregnancy really didn't add to that. It had just been continuing to climb over the course of my 30s, even though I would be working out strenuously, six, five to six days a week, two to three hours a day in some cases, and um, doing Weight Watchers and literally eating between 1,000 and 1,200 calories a day, and literally was 145 pounds overweight, and nobody can tell me what to do. Um, I followed everything. I did Atkins. I did everything, um, and took all the medications, and there really wasn't anything that was working for me. So I finally looked into other options, and I did some research on gastric bypass and polycystic ovarian syndrome, and they had had recently some very specific research on those that have polycystic ovarian syndrome and have gastric bypass. And the research showed that 60%, upwards of 60% of patients um, lose up to 80% of their weight. And some of their symptoms resolve, and not a lot of them do, but um, it does deal with the obes obesity issue. And so in um, December of 2011, I um, had gastric bypass, and even though I've not seen any other resolution of my symptoms with polycystic ovarian syndrome, such as the, the um, high testosterone level and the hair growth and different things, um, I have been able to successfully lose 144 pounds. And for me, polycystic ovarian syndrome uh, has changed my life completely. It's given me a lens through which to look at other people and recognize that what we see on the outside isn't necessarily um, what's going on on the inside. And just because someone looks like they're dealing with a certain issue like obesity, that 
you may not really understand what they're going through and what they're dealing with. And so it's my hope that uh, us as nurses can look at those who are dealing with um, PCOS and look at them with a heart of compassion and understand that they um, are dealing with issues that they may not completely know how to deal with and a lot of the psychological and emotional issues that come along with dealing with the physical aspects of it. So that's my story and um, I appreciate you listening. Thanks.